on Tuesday, I ran a peak gold training, and <laughs> about an hour before the training, I got everything ready. I, I tested GoToWebinar, I tested my recording software, I tested my mic, I tested, you know, make sure the internet was working, as I usually do. I go through kind of my checklist to make sure, and then <laughs> sure enough, about a minute or two before uh, the training actually started, uh, GoToWebinar <laughs> completely crashed and stayed crashed for what felt like an hour, but it was probably only 10 or 15 minutes. And then uh, once I got into the training, I had noticed about 20 minutes into it that AT&T had cut off um, its internet service to me and the, <laughs> the surrounding houses. So it was just interesting. It was, it was one of those things that for that hour, things really were not going in my direction. Um, so I will, um, I'm going to bring that up at the end about the peak gold training uh, because I did something actually kind of neat with it. Hey guys, this is RC Peck, and this is my weekend podcast. And, you know, I sit down each Friday and I look at what I think is most important, not what's most interesting. And then I bring it to you from a point of view of price charts, not what we think things should do, not what they ought to do, but what they are actually doing. And this one idea, this one concept or principle is lost on many investors. We often want to invest in things and then want them to do what we think they should do based on the information or the beliefs that we have. And this leads people to losing a lot of their money. So what I want to talk about is gold and what is going on with gold. Uh, and I want to touch on the major fiat currency on the planet too, which is the dollar. So with that, I want to talk about Gold, but in a very different way, in a way that you may not have heard it before. And I have this idea, this theory called peak gold, where gold hits kind of its maximum price to settle the dysfunction and uncertainty in the world. And it seems to go through a cycle. And the cycle that it goes through is about every 45 years-ish. And what happens with gold is kind of goes up. And this is right here, just, you know, this is 1933. This is 1982. And right there is 2011. Um, if you can't see the price chart, I'm pointing out three peaks on gold. But gold goes through a cycle where it goes up, then it falls, and then it goes up. And that's its major cycle. Like, that's its major cycle right there. And then what happens is it then falls for the next basically about 18 to 20 years. And so this idea that people should always have a portion of their money allocated to gold, it is a broken idea. Because anyone who's had their money allocated to gold in, say, the 1980s and the 1990s can say that if they, in fact, had their 10% or had 10% of their portfolio allocated to gold, that was 10% that slowed them down for almost two decades. And as you can see on the chart in front of you, gold falls. It is not something that is always going up. Now, this is adjusted for inflation because, yes, gold protects your purchasing power over time, but not every decade, right? So if you would have had gold from, say, 1980 to the year 2000 right there, it would not have helped you. But over very, very, very long periods, obviously, and what I wanted you to get most was kind of this green, red, green, this cycle here, green, red, green, this cycle here, which happened between 65 and 70, this green, red, green, which is happening now. We are today kind of where the the bottom of the green arrow covers over the red arrow. And there'll be a point in the future where we get what I call peak gold, which is where when the green arrow stops going up. Now look, gold can be stable. It could be set at $10,000 an ounce, just like it was set at $35 an ounce here. And it will still fall in purchasing power against inflation. So the idea that you always want to be in gold is a myth, just like the idea that you always want to be in the stock market is a myth. Now look at this right here. This is a price chart of actual gold, meaning not GLD, but actu the actual price of gold from 2000 to the beginning of 2016. And there's a red bar here. Now one of the things you know I believe in is probability and not diversification, right? I mean, you may know the right asset to be in. You may know, okay, gold's going to do well over the next 18 years. Let's say someone told you that in 2000. But that's not enough. You also need to know when to be in and when to be out. And this little red dot here was when this strategy I have called LTech Gold told people the probability changed. 
And I'm not saying people should have gotten out or shouldn't have gotten out. It was simply saying, look, the probability of gold going up during that time period is low. And that's this right here. Now, the idea and the, the, the point I want to make with this price chart is diversification. I think there's this kind of this death of diversification. Now, we don't know so because everywhere you look, people say you should diversify. You go to a big box advisor, an independent advisor, or a boutique advisor, they all tout diversification. They all have their unique way of diversifica diversifying. And then you kind of say, I'm not doing that method anymore. I'm going to kind of do it myself. And you leave that and you go to the, the weekend workshop and the pick of the month newsletter world. But basically, it's a do it yourself. And all of them say diversify too. They say it differently. They, they rail against the big box independent boutique advisors, but they still talk about diversification. So it's no wonder everyone believe, often believes that diversification is one of these like, well, of course you do it. Now look at this red circle here. And I'll go, I want to go to the next chart. It's the same red circle. Well, it's not the same red circle, but it's at the same point. The blue line is gold. The red line is silver. The green line is precious metal mining large cap stocks. And the yellow line is small cap precious metal mining stocks. It would not have mattered if you were diversified. You would have lost money in all those situations. So being diversified is not what protects people. It's knowing the probability of what you owning, whether it's going to go up, whether you... Uh, Knowing the probability of what you own, whether it's going to go up or not. It's not day trading or week trading or month trading. It's knowing the probability. And we are in a situation now where gold and silver are going up. And if you look at the price chart here, we have three things on the price chart. We have a green line and a blue line. The green line is silver. The blue line is gold. And generally speaking, <laughs> almost exactly, gold and silver are up about 15% each. And then you have a red line. And the red line on the screen here is the S&P 500, which I missed a P here. I have to say 10 years ago, my dyslexic brain would not even have noticed that the P was missing. But I've actually been working a lot and doing a lot of exercises on my brain so it can see things like that. And what's interesting is gold and silver are going up. But that's not enough because, one, gold and silver fell for four to five years. And now that it's going up, you have to believe that it's going up. And there's it's not going to go up, you know, up up into the right in a nice, you know, 45 degree angle. And so there are going to be periods of time where it really scares people, which has happened really over the last month. I mean, silver has fallen quite a bit, about 10% before Friday's huge up move. And gold has fallen less, but it's also not gone up as much. The point is that you've got these two assets that most people would consider uh, as important as uh, investing in oven mitts. And yet you can't deny that they're trending higher. And this is one of the problems with the human brain. We align our money to our beliefs. We, are, we align our money to I, our ideas and not necessarily what is moving best or going up in the stock market. Now last, last price chart here. This is a price chart comparing gold against the US dollar. And I wanted to show this for a couple reasons. One, if you look down here, right here, let's call that April 29th, that move right there was when the US dollar actually broke below temporarily out of its 15 month long 8% high channel. It broke down out of there briefly and then moved back up into the channel. And now it's moving back down and looking like it might want to test that April 28th, 29th low. And the reason I show you the US dollar and gold, I know there's other fiat currencies, but what I want to show you is, and I could have done it with you know many more charts, but just one point. If the US dollar does break below this, whether that was April 28th or April 29th, um, we're going to see, I believe, we're going to see a, a, kind of the next leg up in gold. And as it is, gold really stopped going up right about over here. I mean, if you think about this, gold itself, gold itself, you know, it, it went up here about April, uh, February 10th. And if you kind of zoom back, you kind of see this rectangle around it here. I mean, I, I get that there's new highs, but it came down here and tested new lows. So it's kind of been in a sideways channel for three months while the U.S. dollar has fallen. So this idea that gold has to go up or has to fall in the opposite direction of the US dollar in lockstep is not true. Sometimes they go in the same direction and sometimes they don't. 
but it has been very interesting to notice that once this bottomed here, this kind of this false breakout here, now you can't see the channel in this price chart, that's not what I wanted to show, but that if in fact the dollar does move below this April 28th, 29th low, it's going to be very likely that you see gold moving higher. So what is the takeaway? Align your money to the market. Align your money to the market and not your beliefs or your age or your self-described risk tolerance. I get that your beliefs are important. I, I do. I get that your age is important. I get that your self-described risk tolerance is important. And if we are building a recipe, creating a recipe, designing a recipe, you know, aligning your money to the market would be like five scoops of flour. And your beliefs would be like, uh, you know, a teaspoon of oil. And your age would be like a half a teaspoon of salt. And your self-described risk tolerance would be, you know, a quarter teaspoon of, uh, of butter, right? So they're, they're important ingredients, but it's not the ingredient that makes up the majority of the recipe. And what most people do is they say, oh, give me five scoops of my age or five scoops of my age belief in self-described risk tolerance. And, you know, the market's really random. You can't really, you don't really know what to do about it. I mean, this is, this is what the big box advisors and the independent boutique advisors tell you, that, that industrial investment complex. They say you can't really, you don't know. So d don't worry about it. But, man, we got to know what your age is and your risk tolerance and, you know, what do you believe? And what I mean, what do you believe well, I mean, you don't want to be in any social, unconscious, socially bad companies, or I don't want to be in an energy company. And I just, I think the best way to protect your future and to protect your portfolio is to align your money with the markets. So guys, I want to offer something to you. I did a peak gold training, as I said, on Tuesday, and I had to, I had to post it. And I usually never record these things. Uh, because I don't like my trainings being out on the internet. But this time, uh, there was too many mess-ups and, and, and uh, malfunctions with the software I was using when I did the training on Tuesday that I actually posted it on my blog. And I had it posted for the attendees. I had a little over uh, a 1,000 attendees. So I, I obviously wanted to get them the access to the training because they had set time aside. So I have done that. There is a link on the email you got from me, the same one that got you to this video. Uh, and there's one or two other links that take you to that Peak Gold training. And I literally go into what Peak Gold 1 was and 2 was and 3 was, just like I showed you a minute ago where Peak Gold 1.0 was 1933. Peak Gold 2.0 was 1980. And we are quickly moving into peak gold 3.0 and how you operate with that and knowing when we have hit the peak is going to be one of the differences that makes a difference and so I put a training together to show you exactly how uh, kind of the, the evidence behind it and the information and the history behind it and I put that together and so I wanted you to have that access to it I'm, I asked Patty to take it down uh, midnight Sunday so there's a little over I don't know what that is 36 hours ish for you to get access to that if you want to watch that. And the other thing I just want to mention, I offer something pretty unique at the end. What I offer is um, I, I, I've come up with this new policy, and I call it the no upsell policy. If you get in at this membership level, which will g give you access to not only the LTech strategies, LTech Gold, LTech Bond, but also Market Probability 1, MPX1, and MPX2, but also Obvious Trend and Deep Value Real Estate, all of my research that I have done over the last 20 years, it is all in there, in the investment library. And I want you to have access to all of it. So much so that when I invent or create or design new services based on my market research, I want you to have that too. No upselling to it. This one access level, this one membership level gives you access to all of my strategies, all of my research for the life that you are a uh, paid up member in good standing, you will get access to all of that. And I just, I love this idea of having a no upsell policy for my research because I myself get sick and tired of when I ever were to or do get a service and then you find out there's like 17 levels behind it and you found out that no, this is just the beginning. So it's pretty unique and I'm super excited and I've been getting a lot of great 
feedback that it's what people have actually been looking for and wanting uh, for a very long time. So I have that on there uh, in the offer. So thank you so much, guys. This is just another step in helping you protect your portfolio and your future. Until next time, this is RC Peck.